Hey guys, it's Maria. Welcome back to my channel. I post videos every single Thursday giving you guys the best tips and tools for being more effective in your practice sessions and helping you achieve your musical goals. So if you're new, consider subscribing. Today we're talking about how to make a bomb recorded audition for your music school application. A few weeks ago I made a video on how to nail your live audition and it'll be linked up here if you haven't seen it, but recorded and virtual auditions are more of a reality right now, hence this video. When it comes to virtual and live auditions, there are definitely pros and cons to both. In your live audition, on one hand, it's more convenient because you don't have to play through your whole repertoire, you know the jury will cut you off, but on the other you are in a different city, playing on an unfamiliar piano in an unfamiliar environment. And with recorded auditions, you do have to play through your whole repertoire. You don't know which part of your piece the jury will listen to. But on the other hand, you are in the comfort of your own home and you can take as long as you want to record it. So this guide is gonna give you everything you need to know to nail your recorded audition. This video will be in two parts, how to plan your recording and how to actually record. And I'll be linking all the equipment mentioned in this video in the description box below. So let's get into the video. Before you can even start planning the recording, you need to plan your rep. And I talked about this a little bit in my live audition video. Since the repertoire is so extensive, you have to plan well in advance of the deadline. Deadlines are usually January, February for recorded auditions and make sure you keep checking back to the requirements page for your school to be on top of any changes that might be made to the requirements, especially in this time when everything can change daily, weekly, monthly. Around two or three months before the deadline, I would say start planning your recording. This is when you wanna check that you have all the equipment you need to record, and if applicable, if your collaborative pianist or musicians are available and feel comfortable recording with you. You don't wanna leave this till the last minute and then realize that your collaborative pianist is not available when it's too late to find another one. But that being said, most schools don't require a collaborative pianist and accept excerpt style recordings. During this time, music schools are not looking for professional recordings done with cameras and microphones that cost thousands of dollars, but they are looking for a good quality self-recording. I will say though that most schools usually aren't okay with you recording on a digital piano if you're a pianist, so try to find a space with an acoustic piano, whether that's upright or grand. Next, you wanna decide on your recording week, which should be at least two weeks before the deadline. Notice I say week and not day, and that's because the repertoire is extensive and you don't wanna stress yourself out and try to record it all in one day. Even professional recording artists take months at a time to record their albums, so it's definitely, definitely a good idea to take more rather than less time to record your audition. And on top of that, you're gonna be your own recording and sound engineer and editor, so give yourself that extra time to edit and upload your videos in case anything goes wrong. And the good thing about self-recordings is you can take as much time and as many days to record as you want. Now let's move on to part two, which is how to actually record your audition. First, you have to pick your recording location. Now, if you're a pianist like me, you don't get to pick your location. You just record where you have your piano, unless you have more than one piano in your home. But with literally any other instrument, you can pick it up and move around. So move to a place that's well lit with a lot of natural light coming in through the window. Make sure your space is tidy and clean. And here's an expert tip for pianists. If you have a shiny and reflective piano, you want to make sure to clean not only everything in front of the camera, but everything behind the camera. Because if you don't, your shiny piano will give you away. You wanna dress professionally, just like you would in a live audition. Just because you're at home doesn't mean you get to dress like a slob. And if you're a pianist, mm, please wear shoes because you're gonna to have to film your face, your hands, keyboard, and pedals. So wear shoes. And the last thing to remember about your setup is put your camera around six feet away from you. So not too close and not too far. Now let's talk about equipment. Like I said before, it's totally fine and perfectly acceptable to film on your phone and a really good tool to help with that is a tripod for your phone. This will keep you from having to stack books under your phone or worry about your phone just falling halfway through the recording. Whether you want to get one with short legs that you can put on a table or long legs that you can put right on the floor is totally up to you. Um, just make sure you do your research on what fits you best and I've linked a few below for your convenience. For the audio, I would definitely recommend an external mic that plugs right into your phone. And those of us who are in music school now know how much of a fuss our profs put up to make sure we have external mics for our lessons every week. So I imagine they expect no less 
from our recorded auditions. I recommend the Rode Video Micro. It's 60 bucks, super easy to use. You just plug it into your phone and you're ready to go. Now, if you're not recording on a phone, but on a camera, you probably already have a tripod, but you can also up your audio level using an external mic. Now, this is getting fancy, so you don't have to do this, but if you want to, I'm using the Canon EOS M50 for my camera and the Rode VideoMic Pro for an external mic. For lighting, if you're blessed with huge windows with a lot of light coming in, you don't have to worry about this too much, but if you're not, you're gonna need a ring light. Some of them even double as a tripod for your phone so you can hit two birds with one stone there. But again, do your own research and see what works best for you. And I've linked a few down below in the description box for your convenience. And the last thing you wanna make sure to do is turn off any noise that may ruin your recording. So that's air conditioning, ventilation, washing and drying machines, dishwasher. There have been way too many times that I've recorded while forgetting to turn those noises off. And then when I go to re-listen or edit my recording, I realize that I'll have to re-record it because it's just terrible and all I can hear is the shh noise in the background. So take it from me, don't repeat my mistakes and just turn off any noise before you start recording. When you're done your recording and you're done editing, make sure you upload it the way they want it. So whether that's to a YouTube playlist, Vimeo, or if they have their own platform and always make sure to keep a backup of the recording if the application doesn't go through or they ask you to resend it. This happens more than you might think. So it's really good to have a backup. And with that, you're done your recorded audition. Congratulations, but that's not all. You'll still have a few supplemental meetings and tests to do, like meeting the faculty, taking an interview and theory tests. And I'll be covering those in the next video. But that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna watch some more of my videos, you can do that right here. Bye, guys.